This is our second video on chapter one, going over the communication models. This is the meat of the chapter, I would say. It explains how it works, how communication works. We're going to look at three different models today, so let's get started. The three models we're going to look at are the linear or action model, which is like what we would refer to as one-way communication. Then we have an interaction model, which is like taking turns. And then we have what's called the competent or sometimes referred to as transactional, which messages are simultaneously sent uh, and it is more, more interactive. It's more like live, like video. So let's take a look at some of the vocabulary we're going to see. This is what I would call a preview slide. It introduces you to what's coming up. And these are the basic components you're going to find in our communication models. Each model actually builds upon another. So the models aren't completely different. They just add on to the previous model. So we're going to use all of this vocabulary as we walk through these models. But to help you out, I have separate slides after the models that provide you with more detailed information on each one of these vocabulary words. I just give you the very brief definition here. So after the communication models, if you choose, you can check out in more detail all of these vocabulary words. But these are definite words you need to know. Our first model is the linear model. It is comprised of a person who would like to send a message to one or more people. We'll call them receivers. And you choose how you're going to send your message. That's called the channel. You know, our, you already know this. You can send a text. You can make a phone call. You can talk to them face to face. You can Skype or video chat or participate in a Zoom meeting. You can tweet. You can make um uh, 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 hop on Instagram, right? All of your social media platforms. Our message is communicated through books, radio, television, billboards. We have a lot of different channels and they all serve a particular purpose. So we want to look at the message that we're sending. Is it complex and detailed or is it a simple message? And the channel you use to send that message does make a difference. So you're introduced to lean and rich channels. This ties back into video one where we talked about nonverbal and verbal symbols or codes. All of our messages are made up of those things. And does the channel allow you to use a lot of those nonverbal, verbal? That would be a rich channel. Or are you limited in your nonverbal or your verbal? So like a tweet or a text, we're very limited on the number of characters or the nonverbals. We don't read that well. Um, that would be considered a lean channel. So if you have simple messages, sometimes lean channels are great. But if you have complex issues or you have conflicts with other people, you would want to select a rich channel. You are also introduced to noise, which is basically anything that interferes the communication process. There are external noises like the bird you may be hearing in the background, that's Rio, and internal noise, things that you're saying to yourself, your thoughts, your thinking, or you just don't feel well, you feel sick, that would be internal noise. Again, you can look at more details on noise on the slides towards the end of this PowerPoint. The interaction model. The interaction model decided that you know, there's really more to just sending a message, stop, that's not really how it works. Because when we think about communication, we realize you, you send a message right through your channel to a receiver. They have to try to read and understand the message, and we're going to call that decoding. You're trying to make sense and understand the message. And then you often reply back to the person who sent you a message. So you that receiver now is putting together a message, encoding, and sending it back to the original sender. And we're calling that reply feedback. Your feedback can be verbal or nonverbal. One of the things that happens in this particular model, it's more like taking turns. Sender sends a message, receiver, stop. Right? And then you wait for the reply. But that isn't explaining how 
all communication works, there's still another element that it doesn't account for. So let's look at our next model. Here is our competent or transactional model. And this is going to suggest that communication is simultaneous in many cases, and it's taking place the sender, person A, is sending a message and person B is trying to decode it and make sense of it and at the same time is at least non-verbally replying back. So these arrows that are going opposite direction, I think they should both be pointing inward because when we were in the classroom, if I was looking at you face to face, you would be sending me facial expressions, and I would be reading those as I'm speaking to you, and that is simultaneous. It's more like a video capture as opposed to taking a photo, a still shot, that the other models are, are a little bit more like. So in this model, we're introduced to a few more concepts. We are introduced to cognition. Now that we're becoming more aware, we put more thought into it, thinking about our messages and how we're going to send them and what we're saying. We're introduced to frame of reference, that's everything about you. How you were raised, who raised you, what kind of environment, urban, suburban, rural, what kind of values were you were you taught, what kind of culture did you um, have as an upbringing, right? Um, were you taught to do the job right and do it well the first time, or were you taught to do it quick and move on to the next thing? Right? Our values, our ethics are all part of your frame of reference. And so everybody has one, and that's represented by these green um, ovals here in the middle of the model. And you'll notice that each person has one, and then there's some overlap in the center. And I would argue that the, the, similar, the more similar our frame of references are, the easier it is to communicate because we have a, a better understanding of one another, I think. Your frame of reference is like a picture frame, and no two people have the same picture frame. And everything that you say is filtered through this picture frame, and everything that you take in messages you're processing through that picture frame and even identical twins are going to have different picture frames nobody's alike so it's all interpreted differently and processed differently okay so i think if you have similar frame of references it is easier my best friend we have a lot of similarities culturally sociologically psychologically educationally etc so it's really easy for us to get along and communicate and understand each other well um, my husband and I, when we lived in New Mexico, used to volunteer at a boys' detention center, okay? And just so to be blunt, I'm a middle-class white girl. That was my upbringing. And I don't have a whole lot in common with Hispanic, black, some Caucasians in detention center with a, a, only a mom. Most of their dads were out of the picture. My parents were still married today. I'm very blessed by that. Lots of good examples on relationships. But that frame of reference, is there was not a lot of overlap there. It was much more difficult for me to learn to communicate with people that are vastly different. So luckily, I played soccer. So I was able to find a good common ground and a starting place so that I could begin trying to um, have conversations and build a rapport with somebody vastly different than myself. And then we're introduced to context. Now, context goes back to that vocabulary we learned in the video, uh, the first video. There's the time, the place, the environment, the setting, the temperature of the room, who's there, right? But we're now we're adding in a few more things to context as far as whether it's more formal or informal. Our communication should change based on the situation, on how formal or informal it is. Um, the relationship you have with that person. You should speak differently to a professor and a boss than you do maybe your boyfriend, uh, romantic partner, your best friends, things like that. Right? So the relationship and who's involved, where are you? Some conversations are not appropriate in cer certain circumstances or locations. So you will want to consider that as part of context. So this is the interaction or the transactional competent model, and this is the one the, that we're using as a foundation for our class. If you would like to test your knowledge of these concepts, I, I have a video that you can check out 
in our class in my PowerPoint that I have available for you to study. The links, these hyperlinks, do not work through my video lectures. You have to just go directly to the PowerPoint. But I have a clip from Legally Blonde, and it would challenge you to look at in this particular scene, what, what do you see that's symbolic? How do you see it as a process? Where do you see communication is irreversible or relational? Um, what concepts do you see from the communication model that we just went over in that video clip? And then you would want to consider whether it's appropriate or effective. I'm going to discuss that in video three, which we're going to move on to here in just a minute. Uh, this is sort of a foundation of, uh, or a measure of uh, your communication. Am I being appropriate and effective? So that's really good food for thought. So like I said previously, I have details on each of the following slides that breaks down all of the components in our communication model. And you can check this out for a little more detail, a little more explanation of what these concepts entail great study tool. And then uh, my last video for this chapter, we're going to look at competence and, ex and ethics.